guys, it's Danny. Today we'll talk a little bit more about the self-watch ring pot or setup that I have with orchids, both the one with Leka and the one with sphagnum moss. There have been quite a few comments lately asking me to detail a little bit more the care, maintenance, routine with these pots and I don't think I have a video dedicated for it. I have videos which do talk about these different subjects so I will link you down below to every video that I have made on the subject and give you a short resume in this video as well. Now right from the get-go I want to start with the idea that the Leka self-watering setup maybe the moss one as well, they're not geared for very very early beginners. So you just bought your orchid, what to do with it, let's put it in self-watering and Leka. I think in most cases that will end in disaster. This setup I think is more geared for those of us who have a little bit more experience with orchids. But for the early 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 beginner I still recommend organic medium which yes we know has its disadvantages but it also has a lot of advantages particularly for those growers who only have a few orchids who are just starting the hobby. This medium will teach you a lot, the orchid and its responses will teach you a lot and afterwards we can go and experiment and as you will see in today's video the knowledge that the organic media taught us will prove to be invaluable whenever we want to do experiments or test out certain other setups and so on and so forth. First let's run through the materials which work with self-watering pots. Everything that is wicking, water absorbent, has good capillary properties, things like sphagnum moss, leka, ceramis, cocoa choir or cocoa peat more exact, the fine one, that can work. What cannot work are are bark chips, even coconut husk chips, rocks or other minerals which are not porous, they cannot wick water in any way, those things will not work. And when I say that they won't work, I actually mean they won't be efficient at all. Everything can actually get a little bit wet due to evaporation, but it doesn't mean it will wick water to the top and actually work as efficient as we want it to work. Therefore, the setups that I have contain media which are wicking or a mixture between something wicking and something that is not. For example, here I have some bark, yes, but I also have cocoa peat throughout the bark and that makes this medium overall wicking. Looks can be deceiving and you might think this is all bark here, but it's not. It's just a top layer that prevents algae. Inside the pot, I have a combination between sphagnum moss and a little bit of perlite just to retain some more air pockets. And of course, the Leka medium, which doesn't have any other materials for the main part, it's just Leka. Whatever other orchids I have in other media are not in self-watering pots, but just your typical drainage and ventilation slits uh, type of pot. Throughout my collection, not everything is in self-watering because not everything responds well to a particular setup. And even though most of the orchids that I personally grow do enjoy Leka, there are a few which absolutely do not due to its properties, which we will talk about. There are a few orchids in my collection which need some very, very specific conditions that I cannot obtain with moss or with Leka, I have to use bark and other mixes which cater better for my orchid. When you have a lot of orchids, a very varied collection, this is inevitable. Not everything will be able to grow in a certain setup. Environment will have something to say about it as well, but that's a different story. One of the main questions I've been asked was about watering. How I water exactly, how I know when it's time to water and all of these details. For those of you who are older on my channel, you might recognize this little guy. This is is a pump sprayer that you can find in garden centers. It is typically used to spray insecticides or fertilizers. I actually don't go with my orchids to the sink. This is the only thing I use and I have been using for the past two and a half years. So I'll link you down below to my initial video on this little pump. I'll show you how I modified the nozzle for it to work and deliver more water. I started out with a 4 liter one and now I advanced to an 8 liter one which makes watering a lot faster. The watering procedure is exactly the one that I show in that video from a few years ago. I just go on top of the medium and make sure that I cover everything. And I think this is about it. How long I keep it flowing, well that's an experience thing. When you do something often enough you get the hang of it, you have a feel for it. So when it comes to Leka I try to go on the surface as much as I can because Leka, yes, it is rather wicking but it's not as good as sphagnum moss. So in this way I actually flush a little bit the top and I make sure that the entirety of the Leka just has some water running through it. 
When it comes to sphagnum moss, things are not as delicate and don't believe what you see, this actually has sphagnum moss underneath all of this bark. So because sphagnum moss is just so wicking, it's really not necessary for me to go all the way around. To speed up the process with these guys, I just put water on one of the sides and yeah, I don't have enough water in the pump, that's why the flow is so low. I think that's about it, that will have to do. The sphagnum moss will disperse the water very, very evenly. Again, it's one of those things that comes with experience. I know that I didn't fill my reservoir way too much and let me just show you. That's all the water that I have in reservoir. Being that the moss was not soaked, this work it actually needed some water, the reservoir will pretty much be empty by the end of the day, which is what I want now in winter time. I don't actually keep the reservoir full, especially with moss, because water evaporates very slow right now. In the summertime, I would put more water, now it's just not needed. So to answer to some of the questions that I got, how I make sure that water doesn't get in the crowns and in between the leaves, well, with that sprayer, things are pretty precise. There are moments in which I do get a drop here and there. If it's cold outside, I just place a paper napkin and remove it. If it's summer, I don't bother with it because it evaporates in like one second. But just being a little careful usually solves the problem. And to the other questions in this particular comment, I cannot tell you a specific number. How do I know when the reservoir is full? Well, I just know. It comes with experience. I also look at the orchid and at the top of the medium and I can usually tell. How often do I need to refill or rewater? It depends. Now in winter, maybe every 10 days or more. In summertime, every five days or maybe seven days, depending how much I fill the reservoir. And pretty much that's it. Another comment was asking me about my, let's say, observation routine. How often do I check on my orchids every day, every once in a week, if I have shifts and things of the sorts? Oh, that, that's a little complicated for me. No, I don't keep records. I tried, I failed. I look at my orchids, all of them, briefly, when I have my coffee in the morning. The first thing that I do when I wake up, make my coffee, go in the grow space, look at all the orchids. But when I look at them, I look at particular things, at particular sites. I don't just pick one and turn it around Around and then put it back. I kind of look at everything. If something looks a little off, I take it and see what's wrong with it. This is something again that comes with experience, comes with knowing your orchids, knowing how spider mite damage looks like, how uh, leaf tip dieback looks like and so on and so forth. It is in the morning time that I do the checkup and it takes 10 minutes or something like that, but it's not something scheduled or automated or anything of the sorts. I don't keep score, I don't keep track or anything of the sorts. It's a little too much for me. I'm not good at that. Another question is about refilling the reservoir. When I water, do I make sure that there is no more water in the reservoir and afterwards I water or if I dump it out and do I actually fill all the way? No, no and pretty much no. Can you imagine me looking in all of the pots? It will take hours with my collection. Uh, no, I do check, let's say randomly, one or two, which I know are representatives for a batch, let's say the sphagnum moss crowd, and if it's dry, I know the others might be dry as well or approaching dryness. Of course, there are exceptions, the tiny, tiny orchids, they're exceptions all of the time. And usually when I water, I don't dump out the water. It's perfectly fine if there's still a little bit of water on the bottom. I don't mind, I don't dump it out, I just pretty much refill it. And how much I fill it, it depends on the season, depends on the orchid. Sometimes I think, well, I should water in three days, but in three days I know that I will not have time. So I'll just water now and not use a whole lot of water. It's okay, with self-watering, the idea is to maintain things wet and airy at the same time with most orchids. This applies more to Lekka. In Lekka, no matter how much you water, you can get away with pretty much anything because it's just so airy. It actually is too airy for some orchids. Phragmopediums, they don't like it. Model leaf paphiopetalums, they don't like it. Too much airiness, actually. But it's a good thing because no matter how much you water, unless you actually fill the reservoir to the top, you won't actually have issues. With sphagnum moss, it's not the case. You need to be a little careful. But you know me, you know I don't pack sphagnum moss too tight. And I do make sure that I don't over water. With sphagnum moss, I can just put a little bit of water, not fill the reservoir, and I know the pot is still wet. If I have doubts, I just check the reservoir and in the end, as I was saying, you tend to get a feel for what you're doing and you start doing it out of inertia and it actually works. 
Another viewer is asking if I still adjust the pH of the water that I use with Leka, even if it's self-watering now. With Sarah Super Peach, oh, I didn't use that in a long while. I think you missed some videos. Or is the pH issue not as bad in self-watering compared to semi-hydro? Um, it is just as bad, I have to tell you. And yes, I still adjust the pH of my water. Not with Super Peach, that was just a random experiment. Uh, when we discovered that Leka can actually alter the pH, if you remember, I'll link it down below to the video. Video, I showed you a organic acid that I got from Amazon. That's what I use. I still use it because it's a big, big bottle and I used a tiny, tiny amount of it. It's a very, very strong acid. If you work with something like that, be careful, use gloves. It's very strong. It's not vinegar. It's much stronger than that. So I still use that, yes, but only for the setup with Leka. I do actually have a video on how I fertilize my orchids, including the Leka ones. I'll link you to it down below. I think I mentioned there as well. I elaborate a little bit more on the subject, so if you missed that video, check it down below. But to make a little resume, as I told you a while back, Leka seems to pipe down a little bit on the whole situation. For the main part, I do adjust for every orchid, pretty much in the same way just to save time, because even if Leka becomes a little bit more close to neutral, 7 is not the pH that I want. I want 6.5 or in between 6.5 to 7. And I do from time to time still measure the reservoir and see where I'm at with the pH. It's a constant pretty much battle, if you will, the battle of the pHs. In the organic setups, be them the cocoa peach ones or the sphagnum moss ones, I don't buffer my water because already the pH of this pot is a lot lower due to the nature of the material. Sphagnum moss is slightly acidic, bark and cocoa peat are slightly acidic as well, they have tannins. Whatever type of water I'm using here, this medium is so buffered that it will drag it down to its pH very, very fast. So I can even use tap water, which in my case has a pH of 8, it will still go down to 6.5 or 6 in this media. So from this point of view, I don't have headaches, but we all know what the disadvantages of organic media are. So when you have a very, very big collection, you do try to cut cost wherever you can and try to have as less setback as possible. So even though not all of my orchids appreciate Leka, that is okay. Who doesn't like it, doesn't like it. End of story. Until further notice, until a better inorganic material is invented, we're gonna do with organics. We're gonna purchase good quality organic materials at least so we don't stress orchids way too often. And that's sadly it for now. The good thing is that Leka in my environment is very, very suited for those orchids who actually can stand a drought very well. Cattleyas, which are the most important orchids in my collection that need to like Leka, they like Leka. And I'm saying that because for me, Cattleyas have the most sensitive roots out of everything. Yes, they're robust and adaptable and all of that, but when it comes to disturbing them, Oh my, and the setback on a cattleya is not something to joke around with. So not disturbing the cattleyas was one of the very, very main goals that I had and I achieved it. Pretty much if my cats and related do okay in Leka, I don't care if I have some Bulbophyllums and all of that, which still require organic medium. And actually they prefer it, they do a lot better. Fragmentpediums, Paphiopetalums, these fine rooted orchids, the Oncidiums, I don't care if they're still gonna want sphagnum moss and things of the sorts. My main collection is of course the hot growers, because I live in a hot climate, so they were the most important ones to be economical for me and to not be set back. And those hot growers are mainly the cattleyas and their intergenerics. Also, the phalaenopsis, they do seem to prefer the leka as well. I am not yet 100% convinced about the novelties and all of those things. I'm still keeping a very, a very close eye on them. These guys, which are the typical flower shop phalaenopsis, and let's face it, we have them a lot in our collections, they do great in Leka. So again, with these guys, problem solved. Not that they were getting set back or anything, but it's an economy thing. Yes, I love phalaenopsis, but would I spend my money on good quality medium for my 40, 50 phalaenopsis? Probably not. Probably I would donate them. <laughs> Luckily though, the fowls really enjoy the leka in my climate as well. So I'm set. Everything else though, which is more finicky or that I am not acquainted with, I don't have much experience with, I'm perfectly fine with trying it out in organic medium, making them flourish and then experimenting with inorganic as well.
And that is actually the whole point of using Leka and inorganic materials for those of you who are still wondering why am I complicating myself with it? Well, first, it's very, very cost efficient. For those of you who have 10, 20, 30 orchids, it might not be an issue to change the medium every few years. If you have very good quality organic medium, even better. But when you have 300 plus, I think, if you can cut costs with some of them, it absolutely matters. And second, the setback. I don't care if I repot Phalaenopsis orchids. They rarely have issues when I repot them. Uh, the ones that are healthy, the ones that I have in my collection for a few years. But when it comes to the Cattleyas, things are rather sad with repotting. A little hassle with maintenance, maybe it's worth putting up with. That's something that each and every one of us has to decide. I decided for myself, therefore that's what I'm doing. So with that said, I think it's time to end. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hope I managed to clarify some things. And I'll link you down below to more videos that I made on semi-hydro, self-watering and things of the sorts. So you know the drill, like or dislike this video below, subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, tutorials, Q&As and other fun orchid subjects. And if you like YouTube to notify you whenever I upload a new video, just turn on notifications for my channel. Also, if you're interested in the particular products that I use, check the description down below. I have everything listed there. And with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!